Thank you, Ryan, for the introduction. Uh, I'm Chandra Tigala from uh, LSU Ag Center, and I also have a joint appointment with LSU. And uh, my talk today, are we there yet on algal biofuels and what remains to be done? And what I'm trying to do here is to take my 20 years of research, try to pack it in 15 minutes. So it's going to be a, a difficult task for me. And if you look at the, uh, the investigators, we have three generations here. Ron Malone is my advisor, uh, myself, and Adam, Beatrice, and Javed are my PhD students. Okay, uh, quick overview of the presentation. Again, biodiesel facts. Uh, I don't have to discuss this too much. The potential of algae as the biofuel feedstock and the primary challenges. And again, uh, coming, uh, we are looking at the cost effect to cell harvesting, high infrastructure costs, uh, the need for intensification, and uh, benign and cost effective liquid extraction and the contaminant mitigation. So, and I'll have some uh, few questions, time for the questions. So if you can rem remember the slide number, that's gonna help me. Okay. Uh, by diesel facts, again, uh, the U.S. diesel needs are about 60 billion gallons, and if you combine it with the, the gasoline needs, we are like total about 200 billion gallons. And out of this, uh, we are at one, the production of by diesel in 2010 and 2011 is about 1.1 billion. So we are definitely uh, far ways away. And if you look at the, the main limitation, it's the feedstock, availability of the feedstock is the main limitation here. So. Uh, the, if you look at the RFS2 uh, with the 21 billion uh, gallons that's needed for the advanced fuels or non-starch, so again, like I said, we are very far away. So the bottom line, we need new, uh, new sources of feedstock. Again, non-food related uh, feedstocks. Uh, microalgae has a lot of potential, and again, it can produce 2,000 gallons or plus gallons per acre per year. This is compared to uh, 70 or 80 gallons per acre per year. Uh, that can come from soybean. So, but having said this, this is like a lot of limitations. Uh, and just want to give you a reality snapshot. This is like a, one of the biggest contracts, 20,000 gallons uh, from Solazyme, okay, to the US Navy. And if you look at the per gallon cost, it's $425. I'm not missing any decimals here. Okay, okay if you look at the, the biodiesel economics, again, uh, I don't have to preach to the choir here. Uh, the, the, look at the total cost here. The, it's the oil cost about 60 cents. That's all you have to do. This is, the 60 cents is coming from all the processing costs. So uh, if you, this is the main thing. That's my main focus here. So I have a, uh, a table here. And if you look at them, I'm comparing two things mainly here, which is the soybean and the microalgae. The soybean, uh, it can vary. I mean, let's pick a number here, 48 gallons. Uh, per acre per year, and uh, and the bottom uh, we have uh, is the uh, 606,000 uh, gallons. Uh, this is the uh, if you assume 30% lipids. Okay, uh, it need not be this high. Even then, it's like it's a big number. So if you look on the right hand side, what we have is like a the the total cropping area required for meeting 100% of the transportation needs. And if you look at this, the soybean, you need like six and a half times the entire crop area in the U.S. Okay, so if you look at algae, of course, this is, uh, this is reasonable. I have one more practical uh, uh, table here. Again, if you look at an average household needing about 1,200 gallons uh, per year, uh, maybe for two cars, and uh, soybean, if you go the soybean direction, you're looking at 25 acres tied to each and every house. So, uh, but then again, if you go with uh, my very conservative estimate of 2,000 gallons per acre per year, you're, still, you're looking at 0.6 acres, which is very reasonable here. So uh, some of the facts, this is very important for you. Uh, I just wanted to uh, tell you uh, several species have about 40% uh, to 60% uh, lipid contents, and some of them have extremely high growth rates. You're talking like something equivalent to like a, a one-foot plant. You come back the, in the evening, it's like a 10-foot plant. So, uh, but unfortunately, these are two are mutually exclusive. You know, you cannot have speed and you, can also, you cannot uh, have lipids also. So uh, several thousands of species are, uh, are uh, recognized, and out of this, less than a handful can be uh, mass produced. Okay, so there are some limitations on that. Uh, again, one more thing is uh, the, the, the strains that have uh, uh, 
higher lipids are, I mean, they get contaminated quite easily, okay? And uh, uh, production of microalgae is not straightforward. Uh, there are several challenges that exist. And I also just wanted to tell you, you hear a lot of PBRs, photobioreactors. I just wanted to tell you, like, the efficiency is not too high, one or two percent. So you have to base all the calculations based on what's coming from the sun, two percent. Okay, so for biofuel applications, if it's a nutraceutical or something high value, it's a different story. But if you're talking nutraceutical applications, uh, PBRs is not the direction to go. You need surface area. Okay, uh, primary limitation for microalgae, uh, the ones in bold are like the, the critical ones. High harvesting costs, again, think about color in water. I'm gonna to touch on this again. Uh, the high infrastructure cost, again, uh, on the intensification. So we're already at 2,000, and uh, soybean is at 70. And soybean works and the algae does not work. So you might be asking that question. I will answer that shortly. So uh, again, we also have a few other needs. Uh, uh, need for benign and cost-effective lipid extraction. And uh, again, we also have species dominance issues. I'm gonna talk about it. This is also my PhD work a um, couple of decades ago. Okay, so uh, cost-effective harvesting. Okay, this is, a va this is one of the, uh, the major challenges that we have. Think about color in water. And what we have, we also have a problem. It's, uh, it's 100 milligram per liter is the starting point. You need to take it to like 20% uh, solids. This is like 2,000 times of concentration. And you have to keep it for, I mean, the price-wise, you have to, it has to be less than $2 or $3. Okay, and also there's another uh, big requirement here, uh, the number of harvests that you need. So you, you have to have 50 to 100 harvests per year. So you cannot let it go for 20 days and then harvest it. So uh, again, uh, the, the low density is very critical so for, for fast growth. And if you, if you keep it too dense, the specific growth is like plummet. It's, it's like a steep drop. So, and again, on each cycle, just want to give you some numbers, huge volumes to process, okay? And then what you get is like uh, 20 gallons or so. And if you're losing money on one cycle, if you have 100 cycles, you're losing more money. It's not gonna help you. So that's the biggest problem here. And uh, if you look at the centrifuges, very effective. This, this can take you to 20%. But then again, uh, the problem is like it's microscopic. You look at this micro unicellular, these are small cells. Uh, the marginal density difference, and, uh, and with all these, the, I mean, you need uh, extremely high G-forces, and again, that's where the cost is coming in. So I did a paper very recently uh, published in Bioresource Technology, uh, and we're looking at the minimum price about $25 per gallon, uh, just the harvesting cost, the operation cost alone. Okay, so uh, this is my uh, algae research team. Again, I'm covering all bases here. Uh, Adam is the harvesting expert here and he's about to graduate this semester. Beatrice uh, is also on the lipid intensification. And Javed, uh, again, lipid extraction, he graduated last semester. Uh, Nick is also looking at uh, species screening. And I added this semester, I added two more people uh, just on harvesting. So you know my emphasis is, is on harvesting. And uh, this is probably one of the, uh, the biggest groups working on microalgae. So, uh, and I also work on gasification and uh, biothermal liquefaction, I'm not gonna to touch on that today. So DAF, again, uh, one of the processes for, uh, for, uh, for um, separating uh, algae, again, um, going to the concepts of uh, water treatment and wastewater treatment, this is something like a Coke, a Coke bottle. When you open the Coke, you see the fizz come up. The only difference is I'm packing it at a higher pressure, and what's being released is a tiny, very tiny bubble, 20 microns, and as these bubbles come to the surface, they pick the algae and come to the surface. And what you have is here. Uh, the, this one cannot go to 20%. It'll probably go from 0 0.01 to maybe 1% solids. So uh, this is another uh, waste water treatment kind of concept. Again, uh, have a environmental engineering background, so kind of using that effectively here. Uh, again, what you're doing is if you go to the water treatment, you look at the coagulation and flocculation. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to repeat the same thing, but using electrodes, and I'm trying to release small quantities of aluminum, extremely small compared to what you would add as a chemical. And, uh, and this will uh, do the uh, instant separation. You're talking like uh, very effective. Uh, I had a video, I had to take it off because of the, the time restrictions. Okay, so. 
And uh, again, uh, proprietary uh, three-stage harvesting, I cannot uh, do a lot of things, uh, disclose this too much here, but I will be, I'm hoping I'll be able to do it next, uh, next time I come here. Again, I'm trying to go from 0 0.101 to 20%, and my price target is about 2 to $3. Adam is the person working on this, and we're almost there. So I think, uh, keeping my fingers crossed, we are doing the final runs this week and next week. Okay, the infrastructure cost. Again, the ponds and raceway costs are higher. Again, people are trying to look at ocean-based uh, culture systems for lowering the cost. And I'm taking an indirect approach. What I'm trying to do is I'm not trying to attack the, the infrastructure cost, but I'm trying to intensify the cultures that will effectively lower the, uh, the, uh, the, the infrastructure, I mean, burden of the infrastructure cost. So uh, lipid intensification, light optimization, and improved pond design. I kind of combined it here to make it one slide. Uh, just wanted to tell you a few things. You can think about this. Uh, again, I do have a, a, an idea on this, and this is the second, only second uh, uh, technology that I won't be able to disclose too much. Uh, again, looking at the, the PAR that's coming from the sun, 2,000 micromoles per square meter per second. And is this really needed? Uh, if you look at greenhouse tomatoes, they do extremely fine at 400. So this is one of the ideas behind uh, this idea, uh, this uh, proprietary technology. And also the, the current raceways and ponds, they were designed 40, 50 plus years ago. So of course there's a lot of room for improvement. And if you look at the DOE call, uh, this was like a concept paper that was due yesterday. Uh, the target was 2,500 gallons per acre per year. And uh, I think, uh, again, uh, I, I want to be careful when I say this, uh, we kind of developed a, a novel technique that shows major promise. We kind of proved it at two levels. Again, at a two liter indoor system with artificial lighting, then I took it outdoors with a 25 liter prototype, and it kind of worked as I expected. And then we are waiting the final results from a field test this summer, and uh, I'm anticipating at least 8,000 gallons per acre per year. Okay, so uh, again, it'll have some higher operational costs. That's what I'm looking into. So if this is proven successful, I mean, this is going to be a major, major breakthrough. So uh, coming to the uh, contaminant problem here, thousands of species, like I said, uh, but less than a handful be, can, can be cultivated. So uh, the biggest problem is uh, replacement by faster species and higher organisms coming and predating on it. So, and if you look at, if you go to a health food store, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be spirulina. Okay, uh, the reason why it's spirulina is like, it's one of the handful, I'm talking like this, I'm not even talking this, one of the handful uh, of the species that can, uh, that we know how to mass produce. And the way we do it is like provide extreme turf where nothing else can run it and run here. So again, spirulina, you have extreme alkalinity uh, that uh, makes it happen. And this is coming to my PhD work and I have, uh, it's called High Star. Kelly Rush was here before. This is my uh, major advisor. Uh, these are the co-advisors. And again, uh, going to the, the concepts of uh, fluid mechanics. So what we are trying to do is like, uh, you, you probably heard about ideal plug flow reactors and CSTRs. When I connect a series of CSTRs uh, in series, it simulates plug flow conditions. That's the main concept here. And what we have is we have a indoor or a sealed system where it provides an alkaline for the outdoor species, which is the amplifier. And what happens is there's also a flushing water that maintains the, the flow. Again, this concept, I'm not trying to prevent contaminants from coming in. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to move them forward. So meaning, if I have a contaminant at this location that doubles every eight hours, I'm moving it from tank, this tank to the next tank in six hours. So what's effectively happening is even though it's growing, it's being pushed out. So it never stays back to create a problem. So again, some of the photos here, this is my uh, 3,000 gallon system that I built uh, every nut and bolt myself. So uh, again, that's me about uh, 20 years ago. Uh, one thing, this is I want to spend a little bit more time here. What you have is a rotifer. One single species can devastate the culture. I mean, what I did was I added 300 million on purpose and watched it go through the system and also did the same thing uh, with uh, higher uh, algal species that have faster growth rates. Okay, so uh, coming to the concluding sides, uh, again, microalgae has a lot of potential. Uh, again, we are already at 30 times the soybean. Can we go to 200x? Uh, again, it remains to be seen. Uh, I, I think it can be done, uh, and so that's why I'm saying a yes here. Uh, Cost-effective harvesting, 
I don't think we are there yet. Uh, again, uh, the things that we need to look at reduce the frequency from, you cannot go 100 times per year. You need to do something else to make it more dense and still be effectively using the light. So uh, you need to get more oils per harvest. And uh, economics should be favorable at one cycle. So that's the main thing. And the bottom line, you have to keep the harvesting cost less than one or two dollars, even lower. Uh, intensification of lipids to 5,000 gallons uh, per acre. I don't think we are there yet, and, but I'm hoping uh, with my research and other people that are working on this, we should be very close to this, especially with the DOE call. Uh, this is like a target for 2018, so we should be there. Um, again, species contamination, so we do have some technologies, so I will say yes for this. We, we can control the species. And also very uh, strange, uh, the Department of Energy, they had 20 years of research, they kind of came back and said, you can pretty much grow any species and produce almost the same quantities of, uh, of, of oils. Okay, so, but still, I think uh, it's preferable to, to maintain a species that has high lipids. Okay, uh, the last slide here, uh, again, lipid extraction, I think we have methods, ex I mean, we do have methods that can do the job. But then again, we, we need benign techniques, non-hexane based, and biodiesel as a solvent. I, I did publish some work so on, on this. And the biorefinery model, again, this is what's definitely needed. It's not there, but I'm still calling it a yes because if you have a product, uh, it, it's gonna follow. So uh, the last thing, this is very futuristic. So this can change the complete picture of the, uh, the bioenergy. And I mean, if, if we can solve this, I mean, there's no need for any more conferences on bioenergy, I'm serious. Okay, so uh, if you look at the, uh, the spirulina example, this is like something I can harvest with my fingers. Okay, if I can somehow put lipids into it, that's it, end of story. We don't have to do anything else. Okay, so uh, that's all I have, and I have it on the next slide. Uh, that's me. If you have any questions, I'll be welcome to answer. All right, thank you. Questions? Uh, remember to. Stick your hand up so we can get a microphone to you. Right over here. <clears throat> While we're waiting, I'll start with one. Um, okay. So y you named a, a bunch of the issues that we're all aware of with, with algae. Uh -huh. And um, is, is, is there one, you know, we've got issues with maybe strain selection and then harvesting, uh, outdoor versus indoor growth, and, and you named all of those. Is, is, is there one that you think, at least in your lab, you're gonna focus on, I guess you harvesting is your big issue, but is, is if, that If the, I have to name two, I would name yeah. harvesting and intensification. Of, of lipid production. Yeah, lipid yeah. production, going from 2,000 gallons per acre per year, going to like 8,000 or something. That's, those are my number two. Okay, right. right. Two right. top priorities, yes. Question. So, Solozyme successfully scaled up in uh, last November they use a process called dark fermentation of heterotrophic algae. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you, because you're taking the open pond approach, I was wondering if you, what your perspective is on dark fermentation. See, again, uh, I personally think, again, heterotrophic is not a direction to go because if you have sugars, you can go the ethanol direction or something else. I mean, the, the limitation is like the quantities of sugars we have. So if you're taking energy from the sun, that's more preferred direction. And also, if you look at the most recent DOE call, they said if you go heterotrophic, you're not interested. Okay, so. Another question? Okay, great. John, thank you. <clears throat> great job on the time. Okay.